I do think there's probably a new look being taken at Qatar. Uh, we've just had the summit there. We've just had the president return. Uh, certainly the Trump administration felt that this was a very important achievement, particularly the terrorist financing uh, agreement and forum. Uh, there will be special monitoring of this. Uh, so I think the, there's going to want, there, there will be an unmistakable I think interest on the part of the admi administration to be certain that the GC state, states are living up to what they've committed to. Uh, and Qatar has always earned a kind of special look because uh, it seems to want to have it both ways. It, it has a very large American base from which many American operations are conducted uh, in the region. And yet at the same time, it has always had an outreach to the Muslim Brotherhood, to Hamas, uh, and to many Islamist groups, radical Islamist groups. So there's a duality there, and I, I hope that the administration, and I suspect the administration will say, you can't have it both ways. Well, certainly in the last administration, there were those within it uh, who understood that and felt it. Uh, with, the, with the Trump administration, because they're still very new, uh, I don't know how, how much that was really incorporated into the thinking of the administration. No doubt, uh, in talking to uh, our friends in the region, they were undoubtedly going to bring uh, what Qatar's behavior, the duality of Qatar's behavior, to the attention of the administration. So I don't know if it was embedded in the Trump administration beforehand, but I'm quite certain that they're aware of it right now. Well, you have two prominent people in this administration who have spent an awful lot of time in the region. The Secretary of Defense was the head of Central Command. H.R. Uh, McMaster served extensively uh, in the region, uh, in Iraq. Uh, in the case of Secretary Mattis, uh, you know, he has dealt a great deal with the Qataris, so, and he's obviously seen the value of the base there, but he's also undoubtedly seen where the Qataris seem, as I've said before, seem to want to have it both ways. So, I, my suspicion is that there will be more of a strict accounting now. Uh, I can tell you, when I was in the, in the Obama administration, uh, in the first couple years of it, because I served in the first term, one of the concerns I had was that the countries were not transparent with us in terms of what they did in Libya. I wanted them to become much more transparent than they were. I was concerned about their support for the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and, and for Hamas. Uh, and I wanted us to make it clear that just because we have a big base there doesn't mean that our behavior is going to be somehow limited and we're going to turn a blind eye to what they're doing. Uh, I think there, I wouldn't be surprised at all if there is some discussion internally in the Trump administration to make it clear to Qatar that if need be, uh, we're prepared even to move the base. Uh, the fact is that's not going to prevent us from responding to what we see, our behaviors, that threaten the very interests that the summit was designed to promote. Well, there's no doubt that the issue of counterterror is probably one of his most important priorities. Uh, and when you look at his priorities and what, he, what might be described as signature issues for him, anyone who looks to be uh, not contributing to countering terror, or to put it differently, uh, somehow uh, in their own way, supporting those groups that actually promote it, I suspect there'll be a reaction. Uh, I'd be very surprised if the Trump administration felt that Qatar was behaving in a way that actually promoted terror as opposed to undercutting it, if there wouldn't be a consequence. My guess is they will deal directly with Qatar and give Qatar uh, a chance to uh, correct its approach and to, and to realize you really can't have it both ways. You can't, on the one hand, uh, be fighting terror and trying to choke off the monies for it and at the same time be promoting those very groups uh, that contribute to it. So something I think we'll have to give and I, I hope that the, the Trump administration will be very clear uh, with the Qataris and that the Qataris will make a choice. Well, I think most of the focus probably has much more to do with the base, uh, which after all is uh, is, is the, the largest single base we have, and we conduct all our operations in the whole region from there. I think Qatar has felt that that gave them uh, the ability to do whatever they wanted with others, whether it's supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, whether it's providing 
material support for Hamas. Uh, I think that is the real is the crux of the issue. I'm not sure that the the military the military deals per se uh, are what are going to be the main focus of the administration. I suspect, you know, can we continue to operate from uh, from a base there, which is clearly important to us, but we might well have alternatives if we feel that. Uh, the only way to get Qatar to stop supporting those who actually threaten our collective interests uh, is for them to understand that if they don't, uh, we might well move the base. Well, I think this has been an issue uh, that is constantly reviewed. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not focused only on Qatar, but if there are questions that are raised, I suspect that you know, it'll, the idea of intelligence sharing uh, is something that would also be one of those issues where you'd see a change. But I think first things first, I think it's, it's important for the administration to have a very direct discussion with the countries so there's no mistaking where the United States stands. And so they understand that if they feel they can continue to promote the Muslim Brotherhood, which you know historically they've done it based on this idea that somehow they can be a bridge, that Qatar can be a bridge. Uh, they can be a bridge between us and the Muslim Brotherhood or they can be a bridge between uh, some of their GCC colleagues in the Muslim Brotherhood, if you're going to be a bridge, there has to be some demonstration that you're serving that role is actually producing some outcome. It's changing the behavior of the Muslim Brotherhood, but we don't see any evidence of that. Quite the contrary. If you look at the kind of uh, statements and tweets that are coming out of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, uh, you see these, these horrible attacks on Christians in Egypt, and you see the Muslim Brotherhood somehow suggesting that they're to blame. Uh, and, you know, as long as we see that kind of behavior, it's going to raise basic questions about is Qatar capable of delivering what it suggests? The, the evidence to date suggests that the behavior of the Muslim Brotherhood has not changed one iota. Well, I think we have to see unmistakable evidence, not hints, uh, not, you know, winks that somehow this is all going to change. There has to be an unmistakable change. There has to be, you know, Doha cannot be kind of the, the place where uh, the Muslim Brotherhood knows they can always count on financial support and they can always count on, on that being a place where they can go and, and have a kind of sanctuary. 